Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, yesterday my neighbor came over and asked me if there was any way I could possibly make him a, a rifle sling for his crossbow using some paracord. And while I've never done anything like that, I figured it's basically the same principle as making a bracelet. You're just going to be making it a lot longer. So I said, yeah, sure, I should be able to do it. So I did. He liked it. I posted about it. Um, and I posted some pictures and, uh, I figured, what the hell, I'll, uh, make a video showing how I did it yesterday and make one for myself. Um, here's the, what you're going to need, um, some paracord, you can use any color you want, um, you know, that's personal preference, I, uh, I would use something that's you know a little bit on the thicker side so that you've got a little bit wider strap coming over the shoulder and the way I'm gonna make it today then you can taper it down um, where it connects to your butt stock <clears throat> so uh, basically what I've got is some of this uh, 1100 paracord that I use a lot it's pretty stiff it's thick and when you're using it to make any kind of uh, a weave like uh, to do paracord bracelets or anything like that it, it gives a little bit more width and thickness and as an outer wrap because I'm doing like I said I'm doing the, the King Cobra today which is a double wrap I'm also still going to use black um, because it's kind of universal if I was going to make it specifically for a firearm I would try to find something maybe that went with that but I'm gonna end up if I keep this and don't give it away I'll end up uh, using this on all my firearms so black is just universal we'll go with you know camo patterns for synthetic stocks black stocks for synthetic stocks and it'll even look decent with uh, a nice walnut and wood stock next pair of scissors you can use a knife um, for this kind of stuff, I like to use scissors because I can make the cut, drop it, and get the ends um, sealed back up. Of course, you're going to need some uh, swivel mounts, which I ran down this morning and grabbed these. These are Uncle Mike's. You can use you know, pretty much whatever you want. I would really suggest using metal. I kind of don't trust plastic out there in the cold, but that's also a personal preference. Use whatever you want. Um, tape measure you're going to need to measure out your cordage and stuff. And of course, a lighter to uh, get things to seal back up the ends and all that good jazz. All right. Let's open some stuff up here. Get kind of ready. These are always a pain in the, the back side to unwrap in the beginning. So that's that. Let's open up these. And uh, when you're doing this, Make sure your your swivel mounts are both facing the same way. Make your little screw, you, it doesn't matter which side you want to put it on, but make sure these are both facing the same way when you get ready to start putting everything together. All right, now this is a sling that I don't really mess with the length too much on or adjust it. So I'm going to measure this out and it comes to 34 inches. So I'm going to actually go 35 because by the time you get done cinching everything down and tightening everything up, you're going to lose an inch or two anyway. So that'll be that. All right. All right, we got the camera adjusted. Hopefully this helps a little. We'll see. <clears throat> First thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, 
get these two ends of your paracord together and pull them through If you get a couple of twists in this one for right now don't worry about it you just want to get any real hard knots out then get it to your end like this and then take your thumb and your fingers like this and bring it back through all the way down to the end making sure you don't have any twists or kinks in either side of the cord Okay, now, got that, so what we're going to do is, you're going to take one of your swivels, and you're going to feed this paracord through there like this. And then loop it around and bring your ends through. This is going to take some time to do this with explaining things, so. I kind of goofed that up. You're going to want to do it like this. Bring that around and then bring these through like this. This is my first time making a video like this, so you kind of got to bear with me a little bit. Please. And thank you. You want to cinch this down nice and snug. Then you're going to want to set it out on a flat surface like this. And get your measurement. Go from where your knot is. And measure out to the length that you want. For me, like I said, I'm going with uh, 35. So this will be where my 35 inch mark is. Get the measure out of the way. And then put your fingers there. Bring it down, get your ends. Put both ends through there. paracord through until you get to the point that you have marked with your fingers everything's falling down on me here and again make sure your little uh, screw ends both facing the same direction. All right, so now, that you got that done, keep your fingers marked like this. And 
then we're going to start our knot. Which for this one, again, stretch it out. Make sure your cordage is nice and straight and even. I'm really not used to this camera like that. And then what you're going to do is wrap the part, make a little bit of a loop on your right hand side. Hold it in place. With the end from your left hand, you're going to come around the back side and find your end. Go through the loop you made. And then carefully Pull that down so it's nice and snug. Like that. <clears throat> All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go on to the opposite side. And you're going to make your loop in front this time. On your left. And then you're going to bring the end on your right. Down. Go behind. Pull it through. And since that tight. And then you're going to go to the opposite. Now you're going to take the side that's on your left. And you're going to loop that like so. Take the side on your right. Under. Bring it through. Cinch it down up. I goofed. I'm a trained professional here, folks. All right. I was wrong. Sorry about that. You're going to take the right side, make your loop, take your left side, go under, come back through, pull it. And then cinch it down and then tighten everything up nice and snug and this is going to be the start of the basic cobra weave now here's a little trick if you kind of get lost <clears throat> your phone rings or something <clears throat> if you see this how this part comes down and this part loops around to keep track of that what you're going to want to do is every time this circles around this way you want this piece of paracord to wrap over this side so we're gonna make our loop in front go behind pull it through and then cinch it down And then we go to the other side. On the same side. All right, now let's get back to what we were doing here. So like I said, on the last one, we had this section that came from this side. So now that it's over here, 
we're going to put our loop in front come around the back side and then cinch it down and that's how you're going to get your even loops and they're going to look like they're supposed to I want to touch base on this one more time to keep this overlap uniform. When you're looking at your weave, the side that comes under and then goes over and under here, when you're doing this, the side with this loop always goes over and this side over and behind and this side will always go behind and through then cinch it up so this time my loop is coming around and going under this side so this side is going to go over and under Take this side over, behind it, through, and cinch it down like that. It's very important if you want this to look nice and uniform. Alright, now I'll get back to you when this is finished. <clears throat> Alright, I've got my first part of the wrap done. Now, you could, depending on what you want, how you want it to look, um, you could just keep going with that basic Cobra all the way down to the end, and you'd be fine. But because I want this to kind of have a look of like a normal uh, rifle sling, where it's a little bit thicker up around the shoulder, and then... It's not much, but it's a little bit, a few ounces less weight. And to me, it's just, when I came up with the idea yesterday, it was more aesthetically pleasing to uh, have this narrow when I get ready to do the second wrap down through this section. Okay, so. I will show you how to... Uh, Cinch those ends down. Make sure you pull this one good and tight. And then keep your lighter handy. Give yourself a little bit here, maybe a quarter of an inch. And Try to make sure you cut it as clean as you can before it has a chance to, uh, the strands get to go back up inside. Get your lighter out. Heat this up really, really well. You want that to be good and melted. And then take your lighter, and push your ends around like this. And what that's going to do that's going to seal this up so it's not going to unravel. And then you're going to do the same to the other side. If you have any little frays like this, it's not a, really a big concern. Again, leave yourself about a quarter of an inch. Try to make sure you cut that as clean as possible. And then just melt it and conform it around like that. And 
that's going to seal that up so it's not going to go anywhere. So, <clears throat> there's the first part done. And making sure that my screw bolts are both facing the same direction. All right, now we'll get back to you when I get ready to show you how to start doing the outer wrap. Okay, all right. All right, I opened up my other cordage and got it all straightened out, found my center line. Now, here's where it kind of gets tricky because you want to use, keep a lot of this. I picked up a 50-foot spool, and I did not cut any off of it because you want to make sure you have enough to go from this end all the way to that end and have a little bit extra. So, now you're going to put that through, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to come around like this. You're going to snug that down as much as possible. All right. Now, we started over here on the last one. So for this one, we're going to start different. But we have to do things... A little bit different for this because you need to go around this inner strand so you're gonna make your loop You're going to come around the back side, go around behind your first weave, and then you're going to pull all of this through. It's lots of fun. Especially when this kind of stuff happens, which it's going to. It's almost inevitable working with this much cordage. And then you want to bring this, work it up. And just keep working it until everything is nice and snug okay then we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna make our loop we're gonna come around we're gonna bring this through Work it up so that we pull it nice and tight. Okay, remember what I said. So this side's going to go over, this side's going to come around, go behind. Might be hard to see because I'm using the same color paracord.
and then you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna pull that tight again around the front bring this around under behind through And then make sure you pull it nice and tight. Snug that up. And then you're just going to keep going, doing that, all the way down through. And when I get to this section, I'll show you how to... There's really nothing to it. You're just going to keep going. But when we get to this section where it thins, I'll uh, show you just how easy that is to. <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm at that section where it's going to narrow. There's really nothing different to this. <clears throat> but you just want to make sure that you keep stuff nice and snug going through there. So that's going to be the last one there. So make sure you pull that good and tight. Work it over. And then it's going to be the same thing. With your next one, you want to make sure you get that super, super snug. And then, once you get down to where you only have your two strands, you're just going to keep doing the same thing. Where this comes around, this one's always going to go over, behind, and through. And around that way, so this one's going to go over. This one comes around, behind, under, through. Tight. It's coming from this side. So, over, round, under, through. Pull it tight. Alright, I'm going to finish up this last little bit. And... Get back with you then. Getting down toward the end. I'm gonna keep going. Pulling this, pull this a little. And 
and then we're going to secure this the same way we secured the other end by just melting I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there leave myself a little bit of room gonna do the same thing here leave yourself about a quarter of an inch try to make that cut clean little bit there just snip it snip that off of there There you go. Let me move this camera just a little bit here. <clears throat> Show you a little trick with your two pieces that you have left over too here in a second. So there you go. DIY rifle sling. Show you a little trick here quick too. With your ends here. These are fairly long sections. So you don't really have to uh, do anything. But start at your end that's already been melted or was sealed original and squeeze your thumb and first finger together and slowly pull this through and what that should do is take out your excess to bring your shell back out to your inner strands And melt it. Do the same thing to the other piece. Just squeeze that, pull it through your fingers. And see how there's a lot of fray out there? By doing that, you eliminate a lot of that. And if you wanted to, you could leave those two sections 
separate. Or if you really wanted to, you could fuse them together. I don't know if this will work. Seeing I've already melted these. Melt your two ends, heat them back up. And push them together like this. Roll that in your fingers. It's going to be hot. So we'll just remember that. Just roll it until it cools. And that'll give you a nice solid bond. So instead of having two little dinky pieces, you now got one. Okay, that's it. DIY paracord rifle sling. Thanks for watching.